Okay, this video is to show you how to complete the fourth or mastery level of the DC Mesh Equations tutorial in Circuit Tutor. So as usual, the best way to start is to look at an example. So let's view one of those. And there's a couple of things here that are new compared to the third level. Um, we still have the idea of uh, super meshes. So for example, these two meshes are combined um, into a super mesh. Um, which would be meshes uh, four and five. Um, but we also have a dependent source now that's present that we haven't had before. So that's gonna require us to write an equation for the control variable of that source. In this case, that's Ix, which is this current here through this nine ohm resistor. And a current in mesh analysis is given simply by a difference uh, of mesh currents generally. So that's just I4, which goes in the direction of Ix, minus I2, which goes opposite to it. So that's the net current in that direction. Um, and of course a current constraint equation for the current source. Also for the SOT variables, well the voltage is fairly straightforward, we've seen that before, but the power absorbed by a current source, um, that's actually a bit trickier to calculate here. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so again, we're trying to do the power of the 7 amp source, and for that we need the voltage times the current. Well, the current is easy, it's just 7 amps, and we need to use, uh, for the absorbed power, we want to use the passive sign convention. So we need the voltage that the current flows into. So in other words, this would be the positive side, this would be the negative side. But the problem there is that finding the voltage of a current source is not easy to do because it's whatever it needs to be. Therefore, we're going to have to use KVL. Remember that all of mesh analysis is based on using KVL, so this is no exception. So we're going to use KVL to find that voltage. Now in this case, it's actually fairly simple because there is actually a resistor, namely the 5 ohm resistor, in parallel with the 7 amp source, which means we can take the voltage across that resistor as being the voltage across the source. And so that's just given by I3 going this way, minus I5 going that way. That gives us the plus and minus here, which is the same as a plus and a minus here because these sides are connected. And so that's the voltage across that source times the seven amps, that's the power absorbed there. Okay, so, and again, of course, you have the plus and minus signs uh, to illustrate KVL. That's a straightforward mesh there. Um, the next one is also straightforward. It just involves the dependent source so that you have a dependent source term. Um, and because the plus and minus uh, of the voltage drop here are opposite to the direction of the, or rather the polarity of the source, um, that has a minus sign. And then the, uh, the KVL equation for mesh three is also straightforward, um, but then we have to use a super mesh for meshes four and five because again, they both have a current source whose voltage we do not know a priori. So that's why we combine them together, make a larger path that goes around both of those meshes and doesn't have to go through then the actual source itself, and so we don't need that voltage anymore. And it's a way of sort of finessing the problem, if you will. So then these voltage drops here, we have three voltage drops involved in that path because there's no elements up here, and those are added uh, to be zero. Okay, so let's go do a problem at this level. And as usual, we've taken the outer mesh to be the reference mesh. Um, so we've set I naught, if you will, that goes this way to be zero. So we won't worry about that. So first of all, um, we uh, need to do the current constraint equations because those are a simpler one. And in this case, we have two current sources. So we'll need two of those equations. Um, so for the five amp source, which is our first current source, that constrains simply I4. So I4 equals to five amps. But we have to say, well, the I4 actually goes in the opposite direction to 5 amps, so that's going to be a minus sign there. Oops, I missed entering the I4 somehow. Okay, so that's good. And then for this current source, which is a dependent current source, well, we treat that as any other current source. Its value is just 6 Siemens times Vx. Remember, Siemens is a reciprocal of an ohm. That's the unit of conductance. And for a voltage-controlled current source, that's going to be the units on that coefficient. 
So now we write the current through that as a difference of mesh currents because two of them pass through that source and they will be equal to the value of the source, which we need this term for a voltage control of current source. So that would just be the six Siemens times Vx, which is our control voltage. And again, the currents here would be I2 goes in the direction of that current source. So that'll have a plus sign and I1 goes opposite to it. So that would be the minus sign. And so that's the current constraint equation for the dependent source. Now let's write the control variable equation for this dependent source. Well, the control variable, remember, is Vx. So what we need is an equation that gives us Vx, which in turn then will tell us what this current is. So we're going to select control variable equations here. And that's a control voltage, so we need that term. And that's going to be equal to, well, dimensionally, we know it has to be a current times a resistance, otherwise it wouldn't have the right units. It has to be an amp times an ohm is a volt. So um, here we have two currents going through that 6 ohm resistor, so it'll be a difference of mesh currents. And given the polarity of Vx, the current that goes into the positive side, and we'll have the passive sign convention is I5. So it's going to be I5, therefore minus um, I3 goes opposite and has the active sign convention. So that would be minus I3, and then of course it's times the 6 ohms. So that's the simple Ohm's law equation for Vx, the control variable. Oh, sorry, I forgot to fill that in. So that would be Vx there. Okay. Okay, and um, now we'll do the SOT variable equation. So there's a SOT voltage. Let's do that first. So a SOT branch voltage, and that's the voltage uh, across this 8 ohm resistor here. So that's going to be given by a simple Ohm's law equation. So V0 is equal to, there's one mesh current um, other than the reference current, which is zero, going through that 8 ohm resistor. So it's just this term. And so that's going to be I3 times 8 ohms. And then, as always, we need to check polarity. So we want to use the passive sign convention if, if it's uh, a plus sign, but um, this isn't passive sign convention because I3 actually goes into the minus side. That's active sign convention. So therefore we must have a minus sign here to be consistent. Okay, so we have that and then the absorbed power by the 5 amp current source. Now this one is the one that could be um, a bit tricky and in fact is a bit tricky in this case. Um, unlike the example I showed you, there is no resistor or single circuit element in parallel with this 5 amp source. So we're really going to have to use KVL here. So let's go and select SOT branch power. And it reminds us there's several uh, pallets of terms we can use here. So we have the absorbed power of the 5 amp source. Since it's absorbed power, we need to use passive sign convention is the preferred method. So we'll have a plus sign. And so it's going to be the value of the source 5 amps times its voltage. Well, what's its voltage going to be? Um, we don't know the voltage across the current source, and so we're going to have to use KVL to find it. So the simplest loop here would be like around here, for example. That's a loop that would allow us to calculate that. Um, and so I'm going to go over here to this term set, and so it's going to be the 5 amp value. And now what I want is the voltage drops across these resistors. So we need two voltage drops across resistors to put inside the parentheses. Remember this term sort of comes with a left parenthesis. So um, this one has a difference in mesh current, so we'll need that type of term. And this one also has a difference in mesh current, so we'll need another one of those terms. And then we close the parenthesis. So this will be the expression for that power. So again, we want to have the uh, plus side here, so the current is going into the plus side to use passive sign convention. So we want to know the positive side here, so that'll mean positive here minus here. So that means I4 is going to be the one that has the positive sign for passive sign convention, and I2 will have the minus sign times the 9 ohm resistor. So that's for the, the plus and uh, minus here. And then there's another plus and minus here to finish this voltage drop. And so that's going to be, again, I4, but now it's minus I1, because that's the current uh, with active sign convention going through the 1 ohm resistor times I1. So let's check that. And that is indeed uh, correct. Um, now I suppose you could have chosen a larger loop to do that. Um, that's actually not supported in Circuit Tutor right now, so please use the smallest possible loop um, to do that. There might have been one on the other side if this had been an interior source, 
um, and you can use that, but don't get involved in trying to go around the outside of the circuit. Even though that might be correct, that's one thing that currently at least is not supported by the program. So uh, please don't uh, enter something for a larger loop than is necessary. Okay, um, now we need to do KVL equations. So we'll select that. And let's look at mesh one. Well, mesh one, remember we have a current source here. And again, the voltage of a current source, whether it's independent or dependent, is always whatever it needs to be. So we have no way of knowing that. We can't write a KVL equation for mesh one. Same thing for mesh two. We can, however, form a super mesh that combines those two uh, meshes. And we'll imagine a super mesh path going around here that combines meshes one and two. And then we'll start and add the terms. So we're gonna need a current difference uh, through resistor and here another current difference through resistor. And finally, another one. And that will bring us back to the beginning. So that's equal to zero. So starting at the lower left, going clockwise, that would be I1 minus I4 times the one ohms. And that's a plus on this side and minus side. So again, I'm adding voltage drops in the clockwise direction as I usually do. And then for the nine ohm, that's the I2 has the passive sign convention. And it would be the I4 going the opposite direction that has the negative sign do the active sign convention for I4. And that's times the nine ohms. And then finally, through the three ohm resistor, to get back to my starting point, um, I have I2 going in this direction. So this is plus and this is minus to add voltage drops. So I2 has the passive sign convention. I3 has the active, so it's minus. And that's multiplied times the three ohms. So that's the super mesh here. Um, next, we look at mesh three. And that's a simple mesh, so we just have um, three regular terms. So we'd have um, a difference in currents here, a difference in currents there, and then finally a single mesh current for the eight ohm, and that will equal to zero. And I'll fill that in. So the first drop here, plus and minus, using the usual passive sign convention, would be I3 minus I2 times the three ohms, as we've done previously. And then we'll have I3 minus I5, which has the active sign convention here, um, times the six ohms. And then finally, we'll have just I3 is the only current through this one. And again, this would be plus and minus. So I3 goes into the plus side. So I3 times eight ohms. And again, the I3 has the positive coefficient in every case, because that's the mesh for which we're writing this equation. OK, then we'll go up to mesh four. Well, mesh four, we can't write a KVL equation, because we have a current source in that mesh. But we have a constraint equation that will take its place. So we won't worry about that. And of course, there's no uh, super mesh here, uh, since we're not using the outer mesh. Um, and then I5, um, that one we can do. So we'll start out, we'll need a voltage drop across a voltage source. We'll have a single current through the four ohm, and then a difference of currents through the six ohm. And that's going to be equal to 0. And so here, this is actually a drop, because it goes from plus to minus. So that'll be plus 1 volt. And then we're going to have plus I5, that current, using passive sign convention times I4. And sorry, times 4 ohms, I mean. And then going uh, to the left here, we have I5 going in that direction. And again, don't get confused by the signs of VX. That has nothing to do with what we're doing now. They happen to be the same, but they could also be opposite. And that has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. We're defining this to be plus and minus because we're adding voltage drops going clockwise, not because of the signs on VX, which are completely irrelevant to what we're doing. OK, so we're going to have I5 minus um, I3. And that's times 6 ohms. And we check that. And that will be correct. And now um, we've written uh, KVL equations for every mesh where we can do it. We've basically done everything we need to do. Um, and if you like, you can count the number of variables. So there's five mesh currents. There's also a control variable, which is an additional uh, unknown. Um, so without looking at the SOT variable equations, um, we should have then six equations. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're good. And of course, we have an equation for each SOT variable as well. So some more equations. And we're finished. And the next problem really is the same type. Um, this is just showing, of course, the details of that solution. And again, you can explain dependent sources, control variables, the constraint equations, and the KVL equation. 
but the next problem it presents will be of the same type. So that's basically what I need to show you for the hard level of mesh analysis. Thank you. Or sorry, the mastery level.